All right, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the studio again. This time I am painting a black crowned night heron. You can see I've got it pre drawn here on my paper. And I'm just going to jump right in with this a little bit of yellow ochre on the body of the heron. There you go, there's the reference photo in the lower left hand corner. And I'm just trying to block in a little bit of color. I'm doing it in a little bit of a different way, maybe, than. Uh, the normal, what I'm trying to do is break this into parts. So everything that is white or this brownish part on this bird is going to be one part. And then I'm going to paint that whole thing or get a layer of paint on it. Uh, certainly not the only layer of paint on uh, this bird. I'll blend that out and get that looking real nice. And then we'll move on to a different part, the wing, the, the head, the, the blue, the beak, uh, his eye, the different parts you see. I'm just blending out some color right there. Um, as I'm doing that, let me just say I'm using my m -Gram paints to do this. It's a little bit of burnt umber that I'm mixing in with that yellow ochre. The brush that I have in my hand there is a Da Vinci Casaneo brush. It's a nice brush. I like it. Uh, I don't use it all that often, but it is a nice brush. It kind of mimics squirrel hair in that it's got uh, some nice floppy hairs on there that will collect quite a bit of water. All right, as long as I've got this color in my hand, there's a little block of white there kind of on his forehead. I guess you can call it a forehead on this guy. Decided to paint this bird. I love these. I have these in the area of California that I live in. I live right next to the ocean, if anybody doesn't know. And uh, these birds are, well, I know they're not all over the place, but there are certainly a lot of them. I walk down to the shoreline at night and I love to uh, see them standing on the shore's edge, looking into the water, just uh, hunting for food. To eat little tiny minnows or whatnot that they pluck out of the water. They're really uh, exciting to watch. I think as my son and I walked down past the dock one day, we saw, oh, I don't know, 17 of them in one area. Uh, so interesting to watch. Anyways, uh, so I've got a little bit of cobalt blue here mixed with a little bit of Payne's gray to, to darken it down a little bit and maybe just a little bit of neutral tint thrown in. And I'm really looking at my reference photo now. I'm just deciding where I need to put some of this paint, a little bit of it to maybe not make the exact uh, same image as that that I'm uh, looking at in a reference photo, but something similar, something to, uh, to do a, a nice service to this animal with. And just anywhere where I have that blue, I'm gonna drop in some color. Go on, maybe I'm going to get it all in there. There we go. Looks like I just touched a little bit of uh, burnt umber into that to darken it up just a little bit behind that eye. And now I'm going to go in right underneath the wing. It's quite dark down here underneath the wing. You can see there's a couple of uh, exterior feathers that you can see right there and then up inside his wing, I guess you would call that his armpit. I don't know. Uh, it's quite dark up there. Whoops, I don't know. The camera jumped there for a second. So I'm going to just continue to fill in some of that dark color in there. And let's hope that that looks uh, similar to our reference photo. It should. In fact, I'm sure it will by the time we're done. There we go. Not much else to do. Just trying to blend... You all know me. I don't like hard edges. Hard edges uh, kind of make me a little nutty, so I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. Now we're going to move on to the next part of this bird and mix up a little bit of paint. Whoops. Obviously, I splashed a little bit. I've got to clean it up over there. Off to my right-hand side are my paint tray and water, so if you see me reach across, that's what I'm doing. A little Payne's Gray. A little more Payne's Gray, a little less Cobalt Blue in here to get this uh, really light gray on this bird's wings. And uh, I say a light gray, it doesn't look too different from the blue that's 
uh, kind of on the back of this bird, but Payne's Gray dries much lighter. Anytime you have paint that's Payne's Gray, Payne's Gray in it, it dries much lighter than you see it when it goes on wet. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it it gets the lightest of all of the colors. There may be another color out there that lightens even more than Payne's Gray as it dries. I don't know exactly what that would be. Uh, but it dries awfully light. And we're going we're gonna to just kind of stretch this paint all the way down to the end of the wings. There we go. And we can just see some feather lines underneath there. It's, it's dark enough to cover those lines, those pencil lines a little bit, but not so dark enough to obscure them so we can't see them. And, and there we go. We've, we are almost done with our first layer of paint on this guy. He's already looking good. He's already looking like he's got a little bit of an attitude here. So let's just uh, get ready for round number two. Well, I obviously didn't like that. I want to blend that out a little bit more. I'm not sure if that was too dark or too light. I don't remember doing that as I painted it. But now let's get ready to paint his beak. Uh, mix up a little paint on the side there, and we're going to come back in. There's a bit of black in here. It's not all black. There's just a touch of blue. Again, uh, keeping with the same color scheme. This is the cobalt blue that's in there. And just giving shape to it. You see me just dotting the edge there. I'm hoping that uh, when I'm done, that's going to look like there are some feathers there rather than just have a straight edge make that a little bit of a tattered edge around his beak and we're gonna do the top first there we go and leave a little light right there there's a bit of a, a highlight on there and there we go looking good that beak goes all the way up, the color anyways, from the beak goes all the way up to his eye. And just a touch darker down here on the bottom. Not too much darker, but just a touch. Uh, hopefully that will save us a little bit of shading uh, later on as we, we come back to it. And now uh, I can come back in and start to give a little bit more shadow and dimension to the rest of the bird. That first layer, for the most part, has dried. I know the beak was, that we just painted really was part of the first layer, but let's not count that right now. Um, so I'm coming in with a thicker layer of this yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt umber on it. I don't want to get too far away from the color scheme that I've got going on this bird right now, so I'm using repetition on the theme of the colors. And just making a look back to the reference photo, wherever I think there's a little dark area, I'm just gonna drop in a little paint and blend those edges out. Um, let's see, I will put the reference photo back up, or back in the corner anyway, so you can see what I'm looking at to see how I'm beginning to darken uh, this bird, <laughs> right, talking to myself, everything's got to be dark down below that wing there. Nice dark area. And that dark next to a lighter wing is really going to make that wing like look like it's coming away from that bird's body just a little bit. Um, I don't need it to look like it's standing out <laughs> a foot away from the rest of his body, but just a bit away. And here's a little bit of dark. This is actually a little bit of neutral tint that I'm dropping in there. Should help just a bit. And you can see that that uh, just flows on this paper. I guess I don't know if I have mentioned the paper that I'm using. Maybe I should say that. The paper that I'm using is Arches Cold Press Paper. It's got a rough surface and 100% cotton. And as anybody knows, you can abuse it and the paper doesn't seem to mind. You can rub it uh, like I'm doing here, scrub it a little bit. 
Uh, you can add water on top of a wet area and it still maintains quite a bit of controllability. Uh, so I guess that's what has made it everybody's favorite paper for so long, or maybe not everybody, but so many people's favorite paper to use. Uh, and then uh, this is just straight, well, there's a little bit of neutral tint in it, but that was straight burnt umber. Trying to make it look dark under there without uh, overdoing the amount of paint. It's a little lighter back here towards this guy's backside. Maybe I got that a little too dark back there, but we can lift a little bit of that paint off. Uh, and now his legs. His legs. A little bit of yellow ochre here. A little bit of um, alizarin crimson in there. Just a touch of it. Or maybe, I actually, probably a little bit of azo orange in there. To get that color. And then I'm darkening it as it's coming up. That looks like it's got a little bit of alizarin crimson in it and a little bit of burnt umber. And there, there's his first leg. Simple as that, not much to it. I'm lightening quite a lot. I don't remember, I don't remember lightening his leg as I was painting it, but uh, that's okay if we need to come back later because I've taken too much off. Certainly we can do that. Uh, <laughs> a little bit, there's a little bit, just his uh, toe coming around that branch there. And now his second leg. Now I'm lucky with this guy. I can still use the same brush I've been using because his feet are huge. If look at the size of those feet. If they were uh, smaller feet, of course I'd have to drop way down in brush sizes, but uh, for me, thankfully, his feet are huge, and you don't notice a big transition between the leg color, his skin color, and the feather colors on his leg. You can see on the reference photo there. So a nice gentle transition will do on that. And there we are, done with the legs. And we can start to uh, add some more color and detail definition to some other places. And yeah, it's dry up there, not dry there, dry there. Let's find out. All right, mixing up a little bit of gray. And come back in and let's just give the indication, the very small indication of some feathers in here. Right now, I don't want a huge color differentiation here because uh, I just want to indicate that there are feathers there, not that they're standing out or anything. So very light uh, touch with the color here. And I've got a few feathers that are larger, a few that are smaller. Uh, bird feathers are usually pretty uniform. I didn't draw them all uniform here and it's not going to matter. But again, I don't want a huge difference uh, in colors. And just what I've done right there, look, you can, it already looks like there's three layers worth of feathers on there just as quick as that. It doesn't take much. And you can really get some nice layers and the the, the color that I've put on, I can't, I can't say it enough, is just slightly more. In fact, it's wet now. It's going to dry even lighter than it is. And let's, let's see if we can make another feather in here. It might be dry enough there to get something. I don't want to get too much into I just painted, but here we go. We can see a couple of feathers there. And again, I'm taking away most of that paint. Most of it is going to go. There we go. I'm going to leave that sit for now. Uh, and we'll come back to those in a little bit. Let me think about what I need to do. And I think what I need to do is take another look at those legs. Add just a bit of color here and just a bit of color there and we're gonna make these legs and feet. I guess I don't, I don't want to not talk about the feet but uh, give just a bit of shading on here and I think we can give a lot of 
form and definition to these without doing a whole lot of work. Right, a couple of wrinkle lines in the skin there. That skin uh, on this guy's got to bend quite a lot. His legs bend just like yours and I's would. So he needs to have some extra skin there or some stretchy areas so that skin can bend. We're just going to draw a couple of those on and there we go. So the color I just put on right there has a slight blue tint to it. Well, that has a lot of blue tint to it. Uh, because that leg is in shadow, and I didn't draw it, I didn't paint the blue on there to begin with, but his body is casting a big shadow on that leg. That's why when I, when I originally said, I don't know why I'm taking color off of there, I don't remember taking the color off of there because I was going to put a shadow line on there. So this leg is slightly in shadow, so I've just painted that on too and blend that at the top. There you go. Well, it did take away uh, the line that I put on there for his knee, but... Uh, that can easily be added back on again. Uh, and now let's go on to paint the branch. And as you can see, I'm not delving or not diving too far from my original color. It's still that bluish gray color that's all over his body. However, now I'm adding a little bit of brown to it. This is a uh, sepia. That's a little bolder brown, a little darker brown than the burnt umber. Uh, and that's just going gonna, gonna to make it look a little older here and a little more decrepit. I'm just going to drop a little extra color in here. Right? If you drop a dark along the bottom of that and let it, let the paint do what it wants to do, that'll basically make that that branch look round for you and you won't have to do a whole lot of work. Let's take that up this way. Just pull that right on up. Just, I've got a lot of that gray paint. I'm just going to mix a little bit of color into it and then go up. There's a little, burnt, a little bit of burnt umber I can tell and a little bit of extra neutral tint. And not much to this stick. Uh, I don't want to do too much to it. I don't, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time detailing that stick. I want all of the detail when you look at this. I want your eye just to go nowhere but to the bird. Uh, I want you to notice that there that he's on a stick or a branch and that's it. I don't want you to think anything else about this when you look at it. But we are going to make it kind of look round-ish. There you go. So that you recognize it as a branch or as a stick. Uh, and that's it. And maybe I'll be done with it soon. <laughs> Doing a lot of work on that branch for not wanting to do a lot of work. Yeah, so I, I touched the paper up there. Really what I'm doing is exactly that. I'm, I'm biding my time trying to wait until the rest of the bird is dry. It's gotten there a little bit. And so now I can come back in and just add a little bit more uh, to the feathers here where I'm adding more color is going to make another layer. It's going to make it push it back into the painting a little bit. Whoops, if I can hold on to the, the brush. As long as it doesn't get too dark in there, it's going to be good. And blend it out. Blend, blend, blend. Nice smooth edge. There's There we go. Up here, there's a couple of, uh, of feathers up here. I'll bet there's going to be a few more to come too. There we go, and just there now it looks. Look at how many feathers it looks like this guy has all of a sudden as we put those on there. There's a little lines in between those feathers. I do have a slightly smaller brush, and nobody has noticed. I've switched to a slightly smaller brush, still using the Casaneo uh, brushes though. And now with a little luck, uh, the legs are dry enough down here. We can go and adds those details back into here that we kind of maybe painted over that first time. Anywhere they're in shadow, just paint that whole bit. Anything else? We're just going to paint a couple of lines on here. Not too much, but enough that it's going to let your imagination know exactly what is here. A few lines, a few lines, a few details. There it's back on his knee. And that one. There it is. That should be plenty. Look at that. <laughs> that should be plenty. 
uh, to show uh, that and a few uh, claws in here. They use those to grab some nice fish with as he's uh, hunting out at sea or along the shoreline, whatnot. Carry his food away so the seagulls don't steal it from him. Uh, that is, of course, just straight black in there. It might be a little too dark. Oh, that's gonna that should lighten up and look uh, better. Uh, look less dark, less pronounced on here. And uh, here's the line on his beak. We're really going to separate it. Now, remember, we did a little bit of darker color on the bottom of that beak and a little bit of lighter color on the top of that beak. Uh, and there's the line that you see to differentiate the two. Makes it stand out a bit more. And I'm just going to draw out a little bit more. Obviously, I think there's a bit more highlight on the top of that beak than on the bottom. This is a little wet here. Got it a bit too dark. Okay, that should be good enough. Now that uh, we've let that blue at the top set long enough, let's go ahead and attack that again. There we go. Those feathers on his back really are quite dark so we're just going to add a little bit of color to those and remember uh, along the uh, edge of that on his body not the round top part but right there where the feathers meet we're just going to leave a jagged edge so it looks like a few feathers uh, sticking uh, out a few white feathers here and there kind of snuck in there just make that edge a little bit raggedy there we go And a few more. And right back up onto his head. Let's get that done too. There it is. And if we don't cover all of it, that's fine. Uh, we can leave a little light spot here and there. Maybe there's a highlight in one of those feathers here or there, but I think I'm going to fill most of it in anyways. Yeah, I've got just water on there right now, and I'm just kind of blending all of that together. Let's see if that looks any good. Uh, I think I'm going to come back to that. It's not quite where I want it to be. I'm just mixing some paint on the side there. And that paint that I'm mixing is a little quinacridone rose and azo orange. There it is right on that eye. Let's make that a nice bright orange eye. Yes, I am moving my paper all around. It does make it easier. And uh, his pupil is going to go on there. Nope, not there. I missed it. <laughs> his pupil is going to go on this painting, but it'll, the, the, it's black people, it'll go right over top of the orange. That's why I didn't paint it just kind of as a donut. Um, and now I'm just adding a few extra details to some feathers. That feather goes all the way up. Blend out the side. There we go. Let's see if we got a few more that go, go in there. There's one. I told you there'd be a few more feathers in here before we were all done with the whole thing. There's one, but very light colors. We don't need to kill this part with color or with uh, more intense colors. Here's another one just popped out right there. And blend, blend, blend. Let's make sure that goes all the way out. Maybe you can see the center of the feather on a few of these. Something like that. And I know we're going to darken his tail right there. They don't have very big tails. They don't use them for balance all that much. They have smaller tails. But they're dark, uh, just like their feathers on their back. And there's a few more. And now this is kind of in shadow underneath here. The back of the wing from the other side. I should put up the 
reference photo and we can all take a look at that to see what I'm working on and it should be coming up in just a second I'm working on a couple of feathers here as you can tell where is that reference photo I thought I put it in here trying to get that tail just right there it is you can see there is a little bit of a dark area right back here we just got to get that in somehow uh, now let's go back up and work on well I was gonna say work on putting some more shading around his head and make his eye his face his jaw stand out but we can work on this end just as well something going on there a little extra color and you can see how just adding a touch of color there really changes uh, the, the dynamics of the painting and again the colors that I'm working with here are just yellow ochre and burnt umber if I need to darken it a little bit then I'm just touching in down here a little bit of Payne's gray that's it and to put a little bit of color around that leg and all of a sudden now it makes that leg stand out from his body a little bit more there's some there's some Payne's gray for you so that leg's got to have a little bit of dark on it a little bit of shadow from the wing just above it but it's got it can't be dark enough to push it back into the background and here we go now we're going to come up and start to to add some more color and dimension some personality to his face now there we go and this is that same color yellow ochre burnt umber working right around that eye and some down here just below that eye just I want that eye to stand out so I'm gonna do what I can to make some areas around it that'll kind of maybe push it forward pop it forward a little bit that might do it that might do it by the time we get a little bit of uh, black on there for the pupil and some white for highlights uh, that just might might do it some dark underneath his chin there maybe there's gonna be a little bit more of a line underneath that's a little bit too much that's Payne's gray I'm dropping on right there let's blend that in and here we go darken I don't know if that's his cheek or his chin down there or a jowl maybe here's the next line we got down there I'm not sure what that is I don't know the anatomy of these birds maybe as well as I should <laughs> I don't think it matters I think it looks fantastic it's starting to look fantastic anyways we got a little bit of a ways to go here comes that pupil it's funny I'm watching it in replay doing a voiceover and just as though I were painting it I can't talk and watch me paint at the same time it's funny how that happens all right I'm gonna do a little bit of cheating here it's very hard to do these fine lines with a the liner brush but the little Sakura brush uh, makes it pretty easy so there we go now we've lined his eye and by the time we get some uh, highlights on there it's really gonna make it look rounder and pop off of there all right we've got a tiny little brush here we're working on a few little details here and there now Ooh, come on which way do I want to do this from all right so he's got a, just a few feathers down here I just want to give the indication of a few feathers down here I don't want to show all of the feathers but you know there's one or two here that just have a little bit of dark coming off of them there we go and 
really what it's just doing is really you can think of it as breaking up uh, any hard lines or hard-ish lines in there what I'm doing up there and just trying to add detail without adding detail to it if that makes any kind of sense but a line here a line there just the indication of something and all of a sudden now his body looks like it's got feathers on it rather than just being a solid smooth surface and if we add some here too, change the color a little bit oh and now I'm gonna get white straight out of the tube this is white gouache should be able to pull the white out or near white right onto that blue I always have trouble with this I always have trouble with it straight out of there might be a little thick there well, that's a little better you can just see it <laughs> I don't know why I always try to use white gouache for highlights or little things like this I always have trouble with it I should just go with like a white acrylic and put on there it might be a little bit better and I'm just trying to get a little bit of dark uh, in between there they, those white those little, little tiny white feathers cast a little tiny shadow I just want them to stand out a little bit it kind of does there kind of does. yeah right let's put that away we're not gonna use that anymore and yeah look see I'm I'm over it <laughs> it does I don't like the way it worked I I gotta do something else um, how's my head up here is it done is I watch this highlight highlight a couple of lines for a highlight and all of a sudden it looks like something now like he knows he's looking at something there's a light on him and I'm just gonna draw these on with that white pen how about that that looks like a much better way to do this got a couple of pens maybe one of them will work maybe not yep uh, onto onto the third pen now one of them's gotta work <laughs> it's just pull some white onto there come on Michael get it to work somehow some way it's gotta work and then where I messed it a little bit before let's just dab that off that looks pretty good I think I'm gonna take this time to say if you have liked this please like and subscribe the video uh, there are links down below to my website I've got more stuff there social media down below my discord channel I'm trying to grow a big community in discord we're having a lot of fun over there I host a channel the link to that is down below I hold a monthly challenge um, it's not compulsory it's just for fun if anybody wants to do that and see how your painting uh, and painting style compares to others and maybe get some nice constructive criticism on what you're doing uh, it's a nice place to go and to uh, to meet some other people who are painting and learning to paint just just adding a little extra color to that wing there is all I've done and with that I think I'm going to call this one done I'll sign it right there and say thank you very much for joining me in the studio for watching this video we'll see you next time here on watercolors with Michael